This video will be the first part in an ongoing series addressing a particular YouTuber's multi-part sequence of pro-antinatalism videos. I will be examining all of the aforementioned within this series, except for the person's first video, because although well-made, it lacks both specific informational content and direct arguments. So, let's dive right into the video and see if the ideas presented hold up under skeptical scrutinization. Materialism, or physicalism, is the idea that everything in existence is made up of physical matter and energy. The universe, its galaxies, stars, solar systems, planets, and everything which exists on these planets can be explained using the language of physics. Okay, the description of materialism given here is pretty reasonable, but there are already some issues. Firstly, materialism has nothing to do with whether or not the language of physics can explain reality. And secondly, physical matter and energy are not defined. The uncertain definitions of these terms will likely cause many issues throughout my examination of this video, so I will present the standard philosophical definitions of these words. Physical matter is a substance which has properties such as spin, charge, momentum, and extension in space-time, but which lacks the following properties. Consciousness, thought, self-awareness, semantical understanding, and capacity to experience. And physical energy in this context is an umbrella word for various properties and processes instantiated in physical entities. Even human emotions such as joy, despair, and fear can be reduced to a physical explanation of bits of matter interacting with each other and electrical activity in the brain. Agreed. If materialism is correct, then this would be the case. The idea of materialism has been around for almost 3,000 years, and can be traced back to ancient India, ancient China, and ancient Greece. Also correct. The development of the Age of Enlightenment and the recent success of physical sciences such as physics, chemistry, and astronomy has catapulted materialism to being the only logically sound description of reality. No. Even if the success of these disciplines prove the correctness of materialism, this would not show that materialism is the only logically valid description of reality. It would simply show that it is the only empirically valid one. The evidence for materialism is overwhelming. The consistency, accuracy, and predictability of science renders it both truthful and useful. You have got to be joking, right? Physics and other areas of hard science have no direct relation to the truth of any particular ontological ideology, ontology being the branch of philosophy dealing with the nature of being and existence. You could, of course, use evidence from science in an argument for materialism, but you could also use scientific evidence to support another ontological stance. Thus, science does not entail materialism due to the law of identity. Because if it did, such an argument would not have to be merely empirically flawed, but rather logically incoherent, akin to arguing for young earth creationism on the basis of Richard Dawkins' The Selfish Gene. In truth, science is just a way of using mathematics and observational data to find patterns in nature, and philosophy is needed to contextualize these patterns and relate them to the fundamental nature of reality. Materialism thrives in the scientific community. Your statement seemed to be an argument from population and authority. Both are not generally useful methods of thinking. A scientific experiment which includes non-physical components is not scientific. Wrong. Science does not suppose any particular ontology. I think you probably meant to say that a scientific experiment that includes non-testable components is not science. Science demands testability, but this has nothing to do with the deeper nature of existence. For example, the whole world could be a computer simulation, and if this were true, it would not make science any less valid or effective. Science provides us with the purest and most reliable method of discovery, 
and deals only with the material world. Both wrong. Purity and reliability are, in this context, subjective human constructs, and science, again, does not suppose materialism. It deals with that which can be quantified. Furthermore, even if science did only relate to the material world, which is not the case, it must be stated that in order to properly grasp reality, one must look to various disciplines, philosophy, science, history, literature, and mathematics, to name but a few. Additionally, we must also incorporate personal experience, intuition, and introspection into our process of understanding in order to gain a firm grip on the nature of reality. Science is awesome and powerful, but it is something invented by limited human beings, and it is thence just as limited. In science, if it's not physical, it doesn't exist. Wrong again. You can keep telling yourself something that is incoherent and false, but that in no way changes the fact that what you are telling yourself is incoherent and false. Almost all people accept that there is a physical world. However, the majority of people think that there is more to this universe and more to a human than simply physical matter. The idea that there is both a physical and non-physical is often labelled as dualism. Most people consider themselves to be mind-body dualists, meaning that they believe in the existence of their physical body, but also believe that there is some non-physical entity, typically a mind or a soul, controlling the body, a type of ghost-in-the-machine belief. Yay! All very true. I am so glad that you are not spouting off nonsense anymore. Mind-body dualists face enormous challenges when defending their position. My god, you're doing so good. Another correct statement. Mind-body dualism leads to ridiculous contradictions and is almost certainly false. Firstly, it's impossible to describe the characteristics of something that doesn't exist in time and space. Oh dear. Just when you are starting to make true assertions. It is trivially possible to describe the characteristics of something that does not exist in time and space. For example, the number three, if it exists, definitely is not present in time and space, yet it has characteristics such as being a prime number and being the square root of nine. There are many issues with dualism, but this is not one of them. Secondly, they would have to prove how this entity, which doesn't exist in time and space, could interact with the physical body to perform its various functions. They would also need to account for reasons why a person with brain damage undergoes vast changes in their personality and decision-making, if their personality and decision-making is held in the non-physical entity. Oh good, now you're talking sense. The issues with dualism that you presented are significant and show that it cannot be upheld as a valid stance. Regardless of these problems, mind-body dualism is arguably the most intuitive explanation for what we are. However, advances in psychology, and particularly in neuroscience, have discredited mind-body dualism in academic and scientific circles, and it's expected to have a trickle-down effect on the masses. Psychology and neuroscience are both pseudosciences riddled with logical fallacies. The reason for this is that they are attempts to apply the scientific method to philosophical questions. Despite this fact, I of course agree. Dualism is an invalid ideology. Many believe that intuition is far greater than education, and that humans will never fully embrace the idea of our mind being purely physical that is a byproduct of our brain. The round earth theory is a classic example of scientific evidence and education overcoming intuition. You seem to lack a proper understanding of intuition and are confusing it with tradition and bias. Mathematics is almost entirely based on intuition, not logic, e.g. imaginary numbers. Further, whether or not the majority of people accept an idea has nothing to do with its correctness. Moreover, you have presented the debate regarding materialism as if materialism and dualism are the only options. However, both are in fact the weakest amongst many possible positions. For instance, one alternative to both is panpsychism, which is the view that there is a mental component to all matter. 
i.e. it is a fundamental property of matter like spin or charge. This ideology is far more reasonable than materialism because it can explain consciousness and more rational than dualism because it can explain the influence of brain damage on consciousness. Another alternative view is idealism, the view that everything that exists is a result of mind, i.e. mind is all. It is not only very simple and elegant, but also very hard to defeat once one has thought about the realistic virtual worlds that can be created out of nothing by dreams and hallucinations. And it can explain almost any observation because a mental reality could be programmed with any logically coherent set of rules. So, to prove materialism, you must find major problems with all of the other competing ontologies and then provide a solid argument for materialism. But like most materialists, you have not done that. Another argument against materialism is solipsism. Solipsism claims that the only certainty is in the existence of one's own mind. Anything else, including the external world or other minds, can never be known. The French philosopher René Descartes famously stated, I think, therefore I am. This has become the motto of the solipsist. All very true. I have no further comment on this part of the video. Solipsism asserts, I know that I exist because I have consciousness. My senses prove that I am real. My senses are not always reliable. For example, when I dream, my senses are activated and I believe the contents of my dream to be real, but I awake and discover that they are not. If my senses are unreliable, I cannot use them to verify the existence of the external world. Nor can I use them to prove the existence of other minds, as I have access only to my own mind. Correct again. It's been claimed that solipsism can never be confirmed nor refuted, that it is a type of a philosophical stalemate. Despite this, solipsism can be shown to be problematic in a number of ways. If solipsism is true, it means that I have created everything, every piece of music, literature, film, every religion, war and genocide. Is it really plausible that my mind has invented all of this? Is it not a delusion of the greatest grandeur to hold to this belief? Wouldn't a mind capable of creating this world be able, with little effort, to break the consistencies it has set up for itself? No. Just because a mind can create something complex and incredible does not mean that it will have an easy time consciously altering this creation. And this fact is well known to the thousands of people who have had to work very hard to lucid dream. If my mind created this world, then surely my mind can reverse the effects of aging, break the laws of gravity, escape death, and so on. Maybe it can, but judging by the content of this video, I doubt it. It seems, in fact, that your mind is having a very hard time even forming a coherent argument. Reality would certainly show itself to you should you decide to jump out of the window of your top floor apartment and test your newfound abilities. Not an argument. You are assuming that solipsism is false to show that solipsism is false. Applying solipsism to everyday life also highlights its problems. If I one day go home and find a friend or relative in severe pain, bleeding to death, begging me to get help, and I state that I cannot objectively verify his existence, let alone the existence of his suffering and blood, the telephone which is required to call for help, the existence of the emergency services operator and so on, this will surely lead to some pretty negative consequences. Should this friend subsequently die due to my negligence, my brain would then surely invent some police officers, a court, and a jail for myself to reside in, along with some overly friendly inmates, coupled with a feeling of discomfort in a particular area. Very correct. Solipsism, like determinism, although logically coherent, is not livable, and thus must be rejected on principle. That is why I am not a solipsist. But the argument that you presented for solipsism can be reformulated to support idealism, which does not contradict lived experience. Thus, once again, you have failed to argue against a real enemy, and instead have chosen to attack a non-material straw man. 
In conclusion, we can assert with absolute certainty at least the fact that something exists. We can logically reach the conclusion that we are part of a consistent external physical universe and have an ethical obligation to recognize the consequences and potential consequences of our actions. Something undoubtedly exists. However, none of the information presented within this video thus far can be used to deduce the validity of the proposition that we live in a consistent external physical universe. Moreover, even if your video did prove the validity of materialism, which it does not, that would in no way show that we have any ethical obligations. In fact, if materialism were true, it would be very unlikely that human beings would have any ethical duties at all. Because in a materialist universe, consciousness and free will probably would not exist, and both are prerequisites for the the objective reality of moral truths. Arguments against the physical world are tantamount to linguistic games, mental masturbation, or mental impairment. Ironically, that is a good description of your arguments for materialism. You presented science as if it were synonymous with the materialist ideology, linguistic games. You attack dualism and solipsism to outrageous philosophical stances and acted as if no other non-material worldviews existed, mental masturbation, and you seemed incapable of telling the difference between philosophy, science, and metaphysical assumptions, mental impairment. Anything supernatural cannot be proven scientifically or logically. Arguments for the supernatural, be it mind, souls, gods, or supercosmic Wu energy vibrationism, rely on unverifiable anecdotal evidence, wishful thinking, and faith. The statement that anything supernatural cannot be proven with science or logic is absurd. If that were true, then science could not disprove these ideas either. What you probably meant to say is that science has disproven many of these things, which is true, but that does not prove the correctness of materialism. Many non-materialist ideologies are consistent with a very naturalistic view of reality. Furthermore, you confuse used supernatural, something that is beyond the functioning order of nature, paranormal, something that is out of the ordinary but still part of nature, and non-material, something that is not in conformity with the materialist ideology. That is to say, you used the word supernatural to refer to minds, non-material, souls, paranormal, and gods slash super cosmic woo energy, supernatural. You state that arguments for the supernatural, by which I will assume that you mean non-material, rely upon unverifiable anecdotal evidence, wishful thinking, and faith. However, your own arguments are highly suspect in this regard. You use unverifiable anecdotal evidence to attack solipsism, arguing that your personal experience of an objective reality shows that solipsism cannot be correct. You engage in wishful thinking, assuming that mankind can be sure of the truth of an ideology such as materialism, saying that we can logically deduce materialism without ever doing so and without even presenting direct evidence for its validity, and you definitely have a lot of faith, faith that materialism is correct regardless of solid arguments. Although it's not impossible for one who believes in supernatural phenomena to be an antinatalist, for many, accepting the fact that we live in a reality made up only of matter and energy is the first step to antinatalism. As we have seen, there are a lot of errors in this person's arguments for materialism, and thus, any further videos will be very unlikely to be correct. This is one of those situations like when you are working on a definite integral, and you make one mistake at the beginning of things, and this causes you to get a totally incorrect answer because you started off with the wrong inputs. And this will be the case even if every other step is perfect. That is exactly what will happen with this guy's next videos. Everything within them that he bases on the information within this video will suffer from the same weaknesses that I have exposed herein. 
In the next video, I'll look at the implications to accepting this reality and how those implications push us further down the road of antinatalism. I cannot wait for that. I look forward to seeing you next time.